Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball, our first show of 2023. You know, combined, the Wolverines and Spartans only have two starters from the state of Michigan. But it doesn't matter where you're from. Once you get to be a part of this thing, the emotions run deep. And it was another knockout, drag them out game here at the Breslin Center. The Spartan crowd was packed in and rocking well before tip-off. Buckets were tough to come by for both clubs. Terrace Reed Jr. trying to give the Wolverines a spark off the bench. He goes inside for the basket and the foul. Jet Howard with the great court vision here. Dishes to Hunter Dickinson for an easy one. We're all square at 12. Kobe Bufkin gets aggressive and hunts his first bucket of the day. Drives in, up with the left hand, banked it in. Yeah, love the patience by Michigan to come back with that reset. Malik Hall gave MSU a spark off the bench with 15. His corner three puts the Spartans up five. They led 27-18 at the break, Michigan's lowest first half output of the season. Second half, MSU quickly goes up 14, but Dickinson comes alive with back-to-back -back buckets. The pick and roll with Doug McDaniel works beautifully. And then the big guy getting deep and scoring with a nifty post-up maneuver. But these Spartans had an answer every single time. A.J. Hogard hitting a number of huge shots. Like Hall, he finished with 15. Check out this take from Jet Howard. Howard into the lane, up with the right hand. Teardrop is good as it trickles over the front of the iron. Jet Howard starting to assert himself in this second half. Jet in double digits with 10 points. Will Chatter was summoned from the bench. He answers with an up and under basket during his brief appearance. Overall, the Michigan defense was good again, holding MSU to 37% shooting, but Tyson Walker drives, throws up an errant shot, and finds the bottom of the net, two of his 14. Michigan kept battling, though. They shot only 34% for the game, but in transition, it's Dickinson getting down the court. He led the Wolverines with a dozen and a half. Then Bufkin using his quickness to fly by baseline. Bufkin drives oh, yes, in. Sir. Bank shot is good for Kobe. It's a six-point game. Kobe put 15 in the score sheet, and hey, don't go away. They would pull within four moments later. But this was a huge bucket, 147 on the clock. Joey Hauser rebounds his own miss for MSU. The Spartans hold on down the stretch and take this one 59 to 53. It was a great game, um, something that, you know, we expected between two really good teams, especially in this rivalry. Uh, you know, we just, just didn't play well enough to win today. They played better than us, so they deserve to win. When you get behind in a place like this against a team like that, how hard is it to come back? It's extremely hard because they got all the momentum. They got the fans cheering for them. And so, you know, for us to be able to dig ourselves out of that 14 point hole and make it a two position game was just, it just it meant a lot and showed, you know, the fight that we have in this team. Dickinson bounces it off the glass and in, and we're tied. Michigan scored the last five. Dump down pass goes inside. Dickinson up with the right hand. It's around the rim and down. When you guys got close there in the second half, how much confidence did you have that you guys could? could push past that limit and overtake them. Man, when we when we brought it down to six and they called that timeout, I thought we had them, but you know, we uh, we just we had a couple too many errors when uh, you know when, when you're down six with only a couple minutes left you can't have those errors. So you know we'll look at the film and get better for next time. We came here knowing it was gonna be a dog fight. Uh, I feel like both programs played well and they just had a good run in the first half. We kinda played lax a little bit towards the end and uh, they were able to execute our mistake. When you guys got close there in the second half, how confident were you that maybe you could push over this hump? I, I was very confident. Um, I feel like some shots just didn't fall tonight that I usually do. And um, I'm confident that if we're in this situation again with, with not only Michigan State but any other team, we'll get over that hump. There was a lot of ups and downs in the game, and um, they made a larger run than we did at the end of the day. And uh, they hit us. We didn't hit back as good as they did. So they're a good team, and we give them their props. This was the seventh meeting since Jawan Howard took over as head coach. MSU with a slight 4-3 advantage with the home team winning in every situation. The rematch, February 18th at Chrysler Center. Next, hear from Jawan Howard. And despite this loss, it's been a good start to the Big Ten season. More when Inside Michigan Basketball rolls on. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. 
Now let's hear from head coach Jawan Howard, brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. It's a very competitive game. And- uh, you got two competitive teams. Both want to win. Uh, both it's a rivalry game, so you're gonna get all the emotions. Uh, you're gonna get the two powerhouses competing against each other. But you know, unfortunately, one of them have have to lose. One has to win. And we were the, the team on the other end. Uh, but we got we got some great things that happen in a ball game that we could be proud of. Nine turnovers in the first half, very uncharacteristic for you guys. What do you attribute that to? Well, you, you have nine in the first half, but you have one in the second half. So please don't forget that stat. And that right there says a lot about our guys being able to uh, make adjustments with their defense and also make the right basketball play. So I'm proud of how our guys responded in the second half. First half, uh, actually, it was just a little bit of um, trying to make the right play. And with those plays, sometimes, you know, it's not there because of the good defense that Michigan State played. Give them credit. But we played some good defense, too, in the first half, uh, holding them to 27 points on their home floor. Uh, so it says a lot about, like I said earlier, two teams competing. I wanted to ask you about that defense. They made some shots. They also got some fortuitous bounces. Overall, pleased with the defensive effort? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Hunter kind of came alive in the second half there. Seemed to be getting the ball deeper in the post. Maybe you got their defense moving a little more. What was the key to kind of getting him off and you guys kind of getting back in the game? Well, uh, you know, first half, you have Doug in foul trouble, Jet in foul trouble. Uh, you know, there were some times where we had to go with some different lineups. Uh, also, Hunter competing hard. Got to give him a breather. It's great to see T. Will, T. Reed, I'm sorry, Terrace Reed come in and uh, give us a, a lift when Hunter was out the game. Just at the end of the day, uh, every guy that stepped on that floor, and then the guys, of course, were digging that opportunity to play. I was so dialed in to competing, uh, and, and that's what you want, and that's what we enjoyed as a staff. Lastly, you always talk about growth. How did your team grow today in this battle? Well, you know, you grow with wins and you grow with losses. And uh, uh, there are some things that we're going to go back on Monday and, you know, sharpen up, iron, sharpen iron, keep chopping the wood and uh, continue to keep competing. Coach, thank you. Still to come, the Wolverines kick-started their week with a blowout of epic proportions. And later, good news from a fallen teammate who made a virtual visit to the Michigan locker room. Welcome back. A lot of people celebrate New Year's Eve with fireworks. Well, the Wolverines waited a day, and it was well worth it. They lit up the scoreboard and had the fans going ooh and ah. The Wolverines started the week New Year's Day against Maryland, and you could say they quickly put the CMU loss behind them. Michigan opened the game, hitting its first seven shots. Buff gets straight on three, right between Reese's eyes. It's 8 nothing Wolverines. Hunter Dickinson always shows against the Terps, it seems, and he sank three consecutive buckets early on his way to a huge game. More on that in a moment. The Maize and Blue blasted out to a 17 to nothing lead with Doug McDaniel providing this memorable moment. And McDaniel just flees Reese. Bounce feet up ahead, Williams, one dribble layup, reverse dial, it's good and a foul! The Wolverine D was also delightful, tying a program record by holding Maryland to a paltry 13 points in the first half. On this trip, Kobe Bufkin makes the swipe and then patiently waits and delivers a very John Stockton-ish pass to Dickinson. 10 players got on the score sheet. They led by 31 at the break, 38 at the high point, and cruised to an 81-46 win. Hunter finished with a game-high 32 and recorded the 20th double-double of his career. That's the way to begin 2023. Probably one of the best starts in Michigan history. Uh, uh, Coach Martelli told us we tied a record for the lowest points allowed. I just feel like we did that with toughest and being the most grittiest team out there. We all won a court. We all were talking. We all were playing with energy. And, you know, that just carried over in the game. We got five losses. You know, that wasn't expected. So, you know, we had to turn it around somehow. Why not turn around the new year? So, you know, our establishment before the game was new, new year, new team. So, you know, we came out with a different intensity, different mindset, and it showed on the court. Wednesday was Chrysler's annual pool party facing Penn State the top three-point shooting team in the Big Ten. And the Nittany Lions showed that prowess early. Seth Lundy, one of his four triples on the night. Jet Howard answers with a determination drive. 
the freshman gets his team going with the bucket and the band-aid. The Wolverines love to see this. Big man Terrace Reed Jr. jumping off the bench and getting actively involved. Basket, zigzags left side alley-oop to Reed who stuffs it with two hands. Life at Chrysler is good when Joey Baker is dialed in. The former Duke sharpshooter hit long balls on back-to-back -back trips to put them up by 10. He had three bombs on the night, upping his season marksmanship from deep to 48%. Watch Bufkin go to work. Kobe drives the right side and gets the bump and the bucket. He completed the three-point trip on his way to 14 points. Just before the half, Penn State with a last-second heave from the outer limits. Picked up by Mahaffey. He'll work his way to the half-court line. Shoot it up there. Banked it in. Wow. Michigan up 42-34 halfway home. Second half, a game of runs. First Penn State, Jalen Pickett goes old school ground and pound in 11-0 Nittany Lions stretch, ties the game at 47. But Michigan trumps that with a 14 to nothing run. Terrence Williams the second, lets it fly from the left side. And then Jet with the fake and take. He bobbles it halfway there, but finishes with an and one. Howard finished with 14 points. Hunter Dickinson paced Michigan for the ninth time this season, two of his 17 coming off the putback jam. Back to Baker, works inside, tough Baker, no, Dick gets in a follow scuff with two hands. PSU closed to within three late, but Michigan closes out the win with plays like this. Freshman Doug McDaniel, a floater for two of his 12. The Maize and Blue win 79-69, and it was a joyous locker room. That was a big win, big team win, all right? We got contributions from everyone. Yes, sir. I, I, I say this again, contributions from everyone. That's how you get it done, fellas, collectively, as a group. We, we defend it, all right? We got challenged with all the movement, with the three-point shooting. We got challenged by getting kills with all the one-on-one -on -one drives, okay? We got challenged on the boards, all right? We got challenged spreading the transition, okay? We didn't get burned on that, all right? That's because of the, the preparation and how you guys approach practice. Okay, being dialed in, being attuned to the details. We will continue to grow the details. Yes, sir. Okay, that's our goal. All right. There's a lot of ups and downs in this game, a lot of challenges, like you just said, but I feel like we overcame them at the end. I think we were the most connected team out there on the court, and that's what got us over those challenges today. You know, they had their runs, we had our runs, but we stayed focused through all of that and came out with the win. All right, they go in on an 11-0 spurt to tie the game. You guys answer with a 13 to nothing run, I believe it was. Tell me about the mentality and the moment it took to make that quick flip. Oh, it's just mindset. Uh, we we use the word mindset. We introduced that at the at the beginning of the year, so that's kind of what was just repeated on the bench by the people on the bench and the people on the floor. So it was, it was good to see us come together and, and be able to close this victory. Like my dad said in the meeting, man, we just is our first day back um, for school, so that alone is kind of distracting us. So just we had to get grounded and understand like we did, we didn't accomplish anything yet. Um, that one win against Maryland was the standard, and we understood if. You know, we want to win basketball games. We have to sacrifice the, you know, the one-pass shots and break down and be disciplined. We can't just get caught up in the eye. When we win games, everyone looks good. Welcome back. The women also had a busy week with three games in eight days. New Year's Eve at number three, Ohio State. The Wolverines were led by Cameron Williams, who posted her first career double-double with 10 points and 18 rebounds. After trailing by as many as 16, Maddie Nolan buried a three with 6.47 to go, cutting the Buckeye lead to a pair. But OSU closed it out with a strong finish on its home floor. 66-57, the final from Columbus. Tuesday, it was back home to face Penn State. The game was all square after three. Nolan opened the fourth with one of her five bombs on the night. She finished with 17 points. Leah Brown toyed with a triple-double, the versatile one, scoring 22 points, grabbing 10 boards, and handing out eight assists. And Layla Filia sparked a key 10-0 run during the middle stages of the frame to put the game away. She scored a game-high 24, 
The Wolverines outlasted the Nittany Lions 82-72, their seventh straight win in the series. The women then geared up for a national TV broadcast at Chrysler Center. Sarah Van Meter has more on their battle with number 16, Iowa. 11,000 fans were on hand to watch Michigan sophomore Layla Filio make her first three shots, giving the Wolverines an 8-5 lead. Layla scored 14 of Michigan's first 16 points, and the home team led 20-18 after 10 minutes. Back-to-back -back second quarter buckets by Emily Kaiser gave Michigan a 10-point lead. Iowa then won on an 8-0 run to tie the game at 31. It was a back and forth game from there. Iowa All-American Caitlin Clark made her first three-point shot of the half, giving the Hawkeyes a 41-39 lead at intermission. Clark scored seven straight points for Iowa to start the third quarter as the road team took a five-point lead. Leah Brown scored eight of her team-high 20 points in the third quarter to keep it close, but Iowa went on a 10-0 run to lead by as many as 14 points in the fourth quarter. Clark led all scorers with 28 points. Michigan battled with Kaiser adding 19 points and Felia finishing with 16. Sophomore Jordan Hobbs added a career-high 12 points. Iowa shot 60% from the field and wins 94-85. It was amazing that 11,000 people showed up today. Um, our fans were incredible. I think it was an unbelievable atmosphere for women's basketball, and I think when you decide to come to the University of Michigan, you you love to play in that type of atmosphere and have that type of support and fan base. So I can't thank our fans enough for showing up today. I also think... You know, it's worth mentioning that I think we might have been the first women's game on Fox, um, which was really amazing as well. And it was a great basketball game. Obviously super disappointed that we didn't come away with the victory, but it was two great teams battling it out until the end. Michigan controlled the first 17 and a half or so minutes of the game. What changed? Well, I think, you know, we, we got very comfortable early. We were able to score early, and they went into um, a zone. And I think, you know, we it kind of changed our pace a little bit. We got on our heels and lost a little bit of our aggressiveness. Um, and I think the other thing they did well is they, they offensive rebounded the ball um, for points exceptionally well. So I think they, they had seven O boards and they scored on all of their O boards. So that's definitely something that we're going to emphasize moving forward. Coach, a really solid game today from Jordan Hobbs off the bench with a career-high 12 points. What did you see from the sophomore guard out there? Yeah, Jordan was unbelievable today. I, I sat down and I had a great conversation with Jordan this week about, you know, trying to keep her confidence and trying to believe in the process and continue to work when she might not see results immediately and, you know, give the examples of an Emily Kaiser or give the examples of a Danielle Roush and really just buy into the process of trying to get better each and every single day and not, and not work and not stressing about the outcome and not losing your confidence. And I think that's really important with young kids because they have a tendency, you know, to, to lose their confidence when they're not seeing success. Um, so I was really proud of the way that Jordan came out today. I was really proud of the way she played and, and she looked super confident out there. Um, she was really aggressive on the offensive end and she just gave us a lift for sure, something that we're going to need moving forward. It was the only meeting this season between Michigan and Iowa. The Wolverines are back on the road Tuesday playing at Purdue before returning home to Chrysler Center on Saturday for a date with Michigan State. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Sarah Van Meter. Five weeks ago, point guard Jalen Llewellyn went down in the London game against Kentucky with a season-ending knee injury. This week, he had successful surgery. A difficult time for him, but the Wolverines made sure he knows he's still very much part of this club. After the Penn State win, they FaceTimed with him in the locker room, and it was quite the scene. Jim, we know you're listening up. You were present in this building, man. Yes, sir. Okay? All right? And we're so happy to hear the great news by Doc that the surgery went well. Yes. What a heartwarming sight, and I'm sure Jalen will be an inspiration for his team the rest of the season as he recovers from that injury. That's our show for this week. Up next for the Wolverines, a road trip to Iowa Thursday to take on the Hawkeyes, and then home Sunday at Chrysler to battle a much improved Northwestern team. That's it for now. We'll see you next time right here on Inside Michigan Basketball.
Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup.